news this morning. The second I stood up and got in the, into the aisle, uh, I got knocked down and shot, and I could feel the blood splatter under my arm, um, and it, it kind of kind of knocked me down. Uh, and then I had got up, and when I got Northern Illinois University students become witnesses to terror when a gunman opens fire inside a lecture hall. An eerie quiet has settled over the school this morning. This is a live look at the campus, mostly empty, except for investigators, administrators, and journalists. Those who remained overnight held a candlelight vigil at midnight to remember the victims and also to support the many survivors. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to ABC 7 News this morning. I'm Jose Sanders. I'm Stacy Bakken for Judy Sue. Here is the latest this morning from DeKalb. We have learned that there are now seven people dead, including the gunman who has not been identified. At least 15 people were hurt. Several remain in critical condition this morning. Classes are canceled today, and all university events are canceled through Sunday. And we are getting new information about the victims this morning. There are now, of course, seven people there. There are 20-year-old Daniel Parmenta from Westchester, 20-year-old Catalina Garcia from West Suburban Cicero, 19-year-old Ryan Mays from Northwest Suburban Carpentersville, and 32-year-old Juliana Gerhardt from Meriden, Illinois. The other three victims, which includes the shooter, have not been identified. Among those injured, Jim Donahue, who is a Rolling Meadows High School graduate, he played football there. Also wounded sophomore Arnum Rahman and Patrick Corellis. Corellis is a 22-year-old senior from Lindenhurst and a graduate of Antioch High School. The front page here of the Chicago Sun-Times echoes a question that many, many people have been asking this morning. It simply says, why? That is the headline this morning, and ABC 7's Dan Ponce joins us now live right outside NIU's Altgid Hall Auditorium with more. Dan? Stacy, all but a handful of students have left the campus uh, last night, but there still are uh, several high-ranking university officials still here, along with dozens of police officers and FBI agents, and of course, a huge media presence. Now, earlier this morning, police officers down in Champaign searched the alleged shooter's apartment for clues into why he did what he did. We do not have any information, though, if they took anything from that apartment. Now, joining me now, a sophomore from Northern Illinois University. This is Zach Seward, and he was in in the room at the time of the shooting. Zach, thank you for joining us this early in the cold. I know you've done several interviews before, but tell us what happened yesterday from your perspective. Basically, it was a normal day in the classroom. I was sitting in the back of the classroom. It was about 3 o'clock. We were just getting class kids out at 3.15. We were just kind of waiting to close up. And out of nowhere, uh, a door opens up on the stage, behind the stage, and a uh, man walks out. It was an average height, um, Caucasian male. He walked out, pumped his shotgun, fired the first couple, or first shot into the first couple of rows. Uh, after that, I, I saw that. I just I ducked. I crawled for the door and I ran as fast as I could. Behind me, I heard gunshots and. Uh, did okay. you see if anyone? Did you see anyone get hit? Actually, I did not see anybody get hit, but I did see uh, people outside coming outside. Um, bloody, I guess you could say. So uh, I didn't, I didn't actually see anybody get hit. I saw the first shot go off. And, uh, but I didn't see anybody actually get hit in the first couple of rows. I was sitting in the back, so. Yeah. Now, there are several reports as to what the gunman looked like, but go ahead and describe him again once more in, in your own words. Uh, I describe him as an average height Caucasian male. He was wearing a black hat, just like the one I have on right now. It appeared to be a black hoodie, um, and he was carrying a shotgun. Did he say anything before he opened fire? No, he pretty much just pumped the shotgun and fired the first round into the first couple of seats. So It has been a very trying time here on campus. Can you give us any idea what it's like on campus here among the students? It's just a bad vibe. I mean, I know everybody's trying to get through it and everything like that, but uh, you can just tell on the campus. A lot of people are going home. I'm not sure what they're going to do with school for the rest of the week, but it's just it's a sad place right now. Okay, Zach so. Seward, sophomore here from Northern Illinois University. He was in the room at the time of the shooting. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, coming up in the next half hour, I'm going to be speaking with the university spokesperson about the university's reaction today. A news conference has been scheduled for 9 a.m., and I'll have more information coming up in the next half hour. Reporting live from DeKalb, Dan Ponce, ABC 7 News. Jose and Stacy, back to you. All right, such frightening moments for all those students. Thank you very much, Dan. 
We are learning more about the gunman this morning and about a threat reported on the NIU campus. Now, last December, NIU's president closed campus for a day during finals week after police found threats on a bathroom wall inside of a dorm. Last week, a student found another threat scrawled on a bathroom wall. We talked to that student's father. On the wall was written, February 7th has ended, and below that was 2 dash question mark dash 08. And below that it was written, it is going to happen. And the word February had the letters F-E-A-R underlined. It is not clear if the threats were made by the sociology graduate student now suspected in the shooting spree. ABC7's I-Team has learned that the 27-year-old transferred to U of I Champaign last year. According to his dossier, his focus was peace and social justice with an interest in corrections and prisons. He was also a student government leader and a 2006 Dean's List Award winner. ABC 7's Michelle Gallardo has been uh, talking with the student body at NIU. She's also on campus this morning and joins us live. Michelle? Good morning. We're actually across the street from Lincoln Hall. This is one of five dorms that are on the NIU campus. Last night, a lot of activity as students try to go home. Most of them have already gone, but there are a few that did remain on campus, and some of those remaining gathered at the Lutheran Student Center very late last night, along with local religious leaders. They gathered to pray, to comfort each other, and uh, this really was just one of a handful of similar gatherings that took place across NIU last night as the student body begins to cope with this tragedy. Now, just a few minutes ago, we spoke to three of the students that were in the classroom at the time of the shooting. And this guy came around the corner and raised up a shotgun and immediately started shooting. And right then, everybody hit the deck and started crawling for the aisles. Like it was like an out-of-body experience. It was really like it wasn't happening. We weren't there. And uh, after I think it all clicked with us, I don't think anybody even moved until they heard the first shot. Immediately I went to the ground and I asked a girl that was laying there, I'm like, is this for real? And she's just like, just run. So we were like crawling over people and like running to the doors. And I never looked back. I could hear the gunshots as I was outside stuff. Undoubtedly, this healing process is going to take a very long time, not just for these students, but for the entire student body. Live at the NIU's Lincoln Hall, Michelle Gallardo, ABC 7 News. Stacey and Jose, back to you. All right, Michelle, thank you very much for that update from the NIU. Seven minutes after.